there is another way of finding the equation of a line. This point 3 as the y-intercept, the point where it cuts the y-axis, and if we know the gradient m, then we can simply write the equation of the line as y equals to the gradient of the line x plus where it cuts the y-axis c. So if we say these lines are parallel, all the lines are parallel. By geometry, parallel lines they have corresponding angles which is similar to the concept of gradient rise over run. So parallel lines have the same gradient but they are intersecting the y-axis at different points. This is intersecting at 4, this is intersecting at 3, 2 and this is intersecting at 1. That means we can write down the equation using another trick which is known as the slope intercept form. So the equation of the lowest one is going to be y equals to mx plus 1. The next one would be y equals to mx plus 2, y equals to mx plus 3 and on and on. So the other rule is y equals to mx plus c where m is the slope of the line and c is the y intercept. This form is known as the slope intercept form. Any line that is horizontal whose gradient is 0 would have an equation in the form of y equals to a and any line which is vertical whose gradient is undefined would always have an equation x equals to any number b. Moreover, some gradient rules come in handy. If lines are parallel, the gradients are equal. So, if two lines are parallel, we can say the gradient m1 and m2 are equal. On the other hand, when two lines are perpendicular to each other, one of the gradient is going to be positive and the other is going to be negative. And if this one is m2 and if this one is m1, we say one gradient is not only negative of the other, it is the reciprocal of the other. These two rules are the most common rules find the gradient of a line. Algebra can also be used to express some geometric properties. The length of a line can be thought of if this point is A and if this point is B, in order to find the length of a line, we can consider this as a right angle triangle and we remember if this point is x1 y1 and this point is x2 y2 we can consider the height of the triangle to be difference of y y2 minus y1 and we can consider the width of the triangle as the difference of x x2 minus x1 so by the Pythagorean theorem we can say that AB squared equals to the base square x2 minus x1 whole squared plus y2 minus y1 whole squared and that would give us the length of the line. We can send the square to the other side and make it square root and write AB equals to square root of difference of x whole squared plus difference of y whole squared. And we can take the average as the midpoint of the line. So the average of x1 and x2 is x1 plus x2 divided by 2. And the average of y1 and y2 is y1 plus y2 divided by 2. And that would give us the midpoint, which is over here. So in order to express the equation of a line, we have to use two variables, x and y. So when we have x and y, that represents a picture. That is geometry. The reason for that is we are representing this using two dimension, x as the horizontal number line, y as the vertical number line. So when we think about this in two dimension, it is clear that the equation of a line 
has to be expressed using two variables. It cannot be expressed using one variable x. It has to be x and y. There is also what they call the conic sections. If you take a cone and you cut it with a knife which is exactly parallel to the base, it looks like a circle. That's the first conic section. Next, if you slice it slightly with a slant, then it looks like an ellipse. If you slice it so that it's parallel to one of the slant sides, it looks like a shape, what is called a parabola. Now, think of one cone above another. And if you slice this, it looks like a hyperbola. And we think of these lines as asymptotes. Conic sections can also be represented using algebra. The most famous, the parabola, looks y equals to x square in its most basic form. So, with the vertical and the horizontal number line, the y-axis and the x-axis, this is what the most basic conic section, the parabola, looks like. Now, the question is, what would be the gradient of non-linear pictures? Here, it's very rugged. We don't have any fixed gradient here because every point, it is changing. Unlike the fixed slope of a stairs, this is very, very different. At a different point, we have a different gradient. With this concept, we can understand the gradient of a curve better. So, at this point, we have a different gradient. At this point, we have a different gradient. At this point, we have a different gradient. And on and on. So, we don't say that a curve has a fixed gradient. On the other hand, it has different gradient at different points. In order to find the gradient of a curve, what we do is we draw a tangent line at a particular point. And the gradient of the tangent line for that particular point is fixed. After all, the gradient of a line is fixed. Now, for another point, we draw another tangent line. And we find the gradient of the tangent line. And that would be exactly the gradient of that curve. For example, if you want to find the gradient of this curve at one particular point, here we have to draw a tangent line. A tangent line is a line that cuts the curve at exactly one point. So if you draw a tangent line here like this, and then if you find the gradient of this line, in the same way we found before, drawing a little triangle, change of y by change of x, that would be the gradient of the curve at that point. Parabolas are represented using a quadratic equation. y equals to ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, c are constant. Now, a quadratic equation or a parabola can cut the x-axis at two points or it can cut the x-axis at one point like this or it might not cut the x-axis at all like this. So we say that a parabola or a quadratic Cartesian equation can have two points of intersection with the x-axis, one point of intersection with the x-axis or no intersection at all. This can also be mentioned in terms of algebra. It's like solving the equation which is one root that means the Cartesian equation cuts the x-axis at one point, two roots the Cartesian equation cuts the x-axis at two points and no real roots. That means the Cartesian equation does not cut the x-axis at all. Thus, we have a connection between the geometry and the algebra of solving equation. So, 
there are two types of pictures here. One, we have the lines, which has the form of equation y equals to ax plus b. And we have the curves. And the most famous curve is the parabola, which is represented as y equals to ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, the major difference between lines and curves is that a line does not turn, but curves have a turning point. Another major difference is lines have a constant fixed gradient. But in case of curves, they have different gradients at different points. We can find this by constructing a tangent line at a particular point and finding the gradient of that tangent line. Once geometry can be represented by algebra, the reverse can also be done. We can start with algebra, for example, the Cartesian equation of a line in the form of y equals to 2x plus 1, and then we can figure out the values of x and y. If I put x equals to 1, y would be equals to 3. If I put x equals to 2, y would be equals to 5, and so on. And two values would represent a dot or a point. Later on, when calculus was invented, even this was not needed. We don't even have to think about plotting the pictures. We can directly, using a special technique, find a gradient. And we can also find other properties of lines and curves. All that without having to plot anything at all.